Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, next up, we have Louise Cole, who's the head of customer experience and facilitation at IATA. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you for having me come and speak with you all today. Just stop sharing my screen. Okay, yes, that sharing, yes, yes. Uh, okay, first off, um, for those who, who don't know uh, much about uh, EASA, International Air Transport Association, um, we're there really to represent, to lead and to serve the airline industry. We have um, a 290 uh, member airlines and they represent 83%, um, uh, I believe, of the, the world's air traffic. Uh, alongside that, we also have um, 100,000 travel agent uh, uh, members and um, around 400 strategic partners, a few of whom uh, have already spoken earlier uh, in, in previous presentations. We will work together to make sure that we um, implement standards, industry standards, IATA standards across the aviation system that bring um, uh, interoperability and, and simplify processes. And it's been a, an interesting and challenging 20 months uh, for the industry as of course we've, we've heard from, from the speakers before me today and we've all experienced ourselves. And um, the, the situation continues to, to be in flux. Um, after a relatively stable period, uh, already my slides are, are out of date, uh, despite only being submitted a, a, a few days ago with the changes with the new variants that we have. And we, we can't afford to continue to have knee-jerk responses to, to variants, and, and even the World Health Organization and ICAO have cautioned and, and recommended that countries don't um, move to... to quickly put in place restrictions before understanding the, the impacts of the variants. And we're focused at the moment in IATA on the restart to recovery program. Uh, there's a blueprint that's been released looking really to bring, um, so, you know, to, to simplify and to streamline, to bring the stability um, and, and simplification and uh, perhaps most passionate for me, harmonization amongst the, the requirements and the solutions. And while uh, we've, we've heard from, from different speakers before of the complexities in that, we know at the heart of this, people want to travel, uh, not, not just for, 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 for trade, for business, for vacations. People like myself who hasn't been able to return home from Switzerland to, to New Zealand, um, uh, one of the most locked down uh, through this pandemic. Um, we want to see our loved ones. People want to move. They want to travel. And it's complex and it's confusing. Even uh, those of us that are frequent travellers, myself, um, who's, who's been working uh, in this space, in this uh, pandemic travel space for, for the last 20 months. Uh, every time I'm traveling, I find it confusing and complex and I'm carrying multiple things in order to be able to prove that I'm okay to fly, that I'm okay to travel. And at the moment within those requirements, they are very, uh, very, very mixed. There's, there's so many complexities around the times in which tests can be taken, uh, definitions around when vaccines are considered effective. I mean, the, the I think, um, quite shameful situation where only half the states allow for um, the, you know, recognise the, the WHO uh, list of, of vaccinations. Um, and this is this is difficult, this is difficult and challenging and uh, represents a real threat to the recovery of the aviation industry. We have the tool in, in, in IATA, uh, Timatic. Now, Timatic has been around for six decades. I like to say it's older than me. Uh, and I IATA is, is a trusted body. It is an international association. It has a, a special status in the international uh, community and it works with governments uh, quite closely. 
and authorities like ICAO quite closely also. And governments uh, give IATA all of their travel requirements. So whenever they have a change, IATA has provided those. And these are received within our Timatic team who verify these. Now these are all verified. And this is a, a human process in terms of verification of the requirements from that country. And then they're um, uh, uploaded very quickly and promptly into, um, into Timatic so that airlines have the ability to automate the checks. Historically, this, this was mostly document checks, visa checks, passport checks. Does your passport have the right length of validity for the country you want to visit? Um, do you have the right uh, uh, ESTA or ETA to, to visit the country you're visiting, et cetera? And some health stuff in the yellow fever, et cetera. Um, and uh, the opportunity was there to really leverage this trusted, this strong government trusted tool um, to, to leverage that. Uh, to be able to provide industry with uh, our, our airline members with the, the COVID rules. And you can see um, this is already out of date. I, um, I, I'm sitting here wishing I had an updated uh, just for, just for a, a visual on what the, the Omicron variant has shown in the flux in the system in the last few days. Um, but it, it, while it has had its, uh, some periods of stability, we're continually facing um, the, the navigating the complexity for for the the airlines. For the passengers themselves, IATA runs a global passenger survey uh, annually, and there's no surprises here. And as the other speakers have said, also, and this this is a this is a challenge and the people are actually telling us it's a challenge. Um, and we we need to do something about it. So our member airlines um, asked IASA to to uh, come up with a solution that would bring harmonization. And this, this uh, is in the face of many multiple and competing solutions. So looking to find a path forward in this in order to get to that place of harmonization. And also looking to provide something uh, quickly, bring something quickly for the airlines. And that is where the um, IATA Travel Pass was, was born. Now, people often refer to it as an app, but it's, it's not simply an app. Certainly there's an app, uh, the, the center, the one that the passenger themselves sees, um, but it's an, it's an ecosystem and it's an ecosystem that's built on the, uh, on the principles of decentralized identity and on the W3C um, standards for decentralized identity and for verifiable credentials. It's a digital wallet. Um, it is a, a travel wallet solution. And it's something that we've been working towards for a long time in industry in terms of managing identity, and in particular with the work that was being done towards the standards and recommended practices for one ID, looking to bring uh, seamless biometric travel uh, for, a, for a, an, an, easier, um, an easier journey through the airport. And it made sense to leverage the work that had been done within the One ID and within the digital wallet um, uh, decentralized identity space with airlines to leverage off that. Because we know that uh, in crossing an international border, your travel document is the key, is the key document, your identity document uh, and that, that machine readable travel document passport that you have is, is the, the, key, uh, the key anchoring document for your identity. And we knew also that to have governments um, get the confidence to, to remove um, or, or, or begin to roadmap and plan out to, to sunset some of these requirements, that they had to have the trust and confidence. So we started, we've started very much focusing on the identity and the digital identity, authenticating that passport where, where a chip is present. Uh, undertaking liveness checking for the biometric, undertaking a strong uh, match for the, the biometric of the person with the biometric uh, stored in their passport, and, and creating a digital identity that's consistent with the ICAO standard for the digital passport known as a digital travel credential. And uh, this, this, this creates a very, very strong digital identity that we see will be of use in the industry and, and for passengers themselves 
beyond this current crisis of COVID-19. When, when, we're, um, when we're in the, the post-pandemic uh, stage of COVID-19, that we can, um, any investments made in technology now can really springboard a whole lot of other improvements and transformations that are needed in the passenger identity space. And these are things that decentralised identity can bring us uh, and verifiable credentials, of course. The app can be used whether or not you're flying anywhere. You can use it to search regulations. And as we've seen in other presentations, you, you can search the re regulations by country. You can, you can find labs in your vicinity, et cetera. Um, but the magic really begins when you import your itinerary. So you, you import your itinerary from a, a, a IATA Travel Pass participating airline and it produces for you your list, your checklist of things, the regulations and the requirements that you have to meet and, and, and the checklist of the documents that you'll need to complete, et cetera. You can upload your, your vaccination certificate, um, uh, which everything we can verify is verified. If it's not verified, it's, it's clearly identified in the, in the scheme or in the credential that it's not verified. Um, to, to store these in your wallet as you would an old school, uh, an old school travel wallet with all your with all your documents in it. Each each uh, each token, each physical credential that is absorbed into the travel pass wallet is turned into a verifiable credential, uh, so that it can then be used appropriately in the ecosystem. Um, once you've uploaded everything, the magic of Timatic kicks in again and it measures and it gives you that response. Are you okay to travel? Is your travel uh, okay to travel conditional on you meeting some more expectations or, um, or are you not okay to travel? It'll tell you why in that scenario so that you can, you can do that. And this is, this is live, this is a live uh, check. Every time the app is opened, the credentials that you have are measured against the country requirements. So it's not static. So if they do change, you can, through push notifications, et cetera, um, be informed of, of, of uh, changes in that dynamic um, way that people are used to, an intuitive way of working with apps on their, on their device. Um, the, the, all of this is, is, is good and you get the okay and certainly you can show that on the screen. Uh, however, the, the Future focus, I think, in the industry, what's most important is that transformation of the way in which that, that passenger then shares that information with anyone who needs to have the information on the journey. Now, traditionally, and not a lot of people know this, but airlines are, uh, have requirements upon them to take information, identity information, passport information from passengers and hand it on to governments. And they're a broker in that scenario. And they're dealing with identity data, which we all know that carries some complex privacy risks. We want people to be able to, passengers to be able to share the information they need with the government and all the information the government, government wants. But really for airlines, for industry, for airports, we want them to be able to have the power to, to use tools like zero knowledge proofs and selective disclosure uh, to, to share only what they need to share with the party that they're transacting with. Um, so so that, that data is minimized, privacy is protected, and ultimately governments are making decision about who enters their borders, not airline check-in agents at a counter looking at a lot of documents. That we want to be able to have this so that the passenger can share directly with the government the data the government needs and have the return message that can be given to the to the airlines to say this person's okay. This person meets the requirements, and that is the the uh, the ecosystem for IATA Travel Pass. It's growing. Um, the the app went live late April. The the version one. Um, it was a, a a very busy and hectic time, as as anyone who works in this space would know. Uh, there's over 76 airlines that have um, have or are currently trialling uh, travel pass, uh, and we've got um, uh, eight or nine airlines moving into full production. The, the one I think is due in days uh, for Qantas and for 
for Jetstar and Jetstar Asia. Uh, Emirates are close behind in that. And, and, and over the coming months, we'll see it moving from limited trials to across full production, full flights for, um, for our airline members, our, our passengers. And, and, and we can see this tool being in use for a long time. It won't stay as a standalone customer facing app for the long term. It's the short term, it's a necessity. Uh, we do want to see this as an SDK and a, an airline's own apps. People don't want more apps. They want to do their business in the apps that they do their business in. So we do want to see this in the airline's own apps. And um, I think I can see the lovely face of Kalia. So um, <laughs> I will quickly jump through my last, my last slides. A lot of benefits in this. Um, uh, some I feel very passionate about is the, the, the privacy. It's protecting us not only in the face of the pandemic and in the contactless benefits that it brings, but it's protecting the passengers' privacy as well. And it, it's going to enable automation, contactless travel, the things that we've been working for in aviation for, for many years. Um, and I think that is it for me. So thank you very much. And back to you, Kalia. Thank you, Louise. Um...